Hi, and welcome to Libby Presents Real Ghost Hunting. Here we are in beautiful Lake George. We're at the battleground, and what we're gonna do is take you through a little like day trip, we're just walking around. We're gonna talk about some of the haunted locations and some of the history here, and just get you familiar with the site before we start our investigation. Uh, Mike, tell them where we are right now, and give us a Here we are at Lake George Battleground. It is an active place, as you can hear in the background. We're not gonna <laughs> mask anything, this is the town. Um, a lot of steamboats and stuff that go through the lake, so we are here a little early before we investigate. Um, we are right by the field hospital. So there is a battle that was here from the French and Indian War from 1755. And the field hospital is right over here. It used to be that, I should say. Um, and one night when we were investigating here, we were sitting right by the uh, marker sign. And it was me and another investigator. And basically, we were just sitting there talking and we looked up and it looked like there was an apparition, like a man in blue that literally just walked right in front of us and like, we got pretty startled and um, we kind of got up, started taking photos, but nothing came out, unfortunately. Um, that is one of the claims that do happen in this area, we will attach it, so we'll see what happens. Um, we're going to take you through a walk of the entire battleground um, and kind of hit the different spots of the activity that occurs at those locations. Right. All right. Yeah. All right, so here we are. This is the gazebo. Uh, this is not an original structure. This was added later on. Uh, but that being said, we've had a lot of paranormal activity that has occurred around this gazebo itself. Uh, I've had a bunch of experiences, the feelings of being overwhelmed, uh, sounds of what sounds like a, like a group of Native Americans like charging. Uh, that we've had experienced here. I know Mike, I know Will, you guys have had experiences here. Uh, you, Will, you want to jump in and tell them about some of the stuff you had here? Yeah, um, well, you know, I, I was sitting in the corner of the gazebo and to make a long story short, um, another investigator took a flash photo and uh, an investigator sitting across from me saw a large figure behind me um, as the flash photo went off. And at the same time where he reacted to what he saw, just a, about a second later, I felt a hand grab my shoulder, um, which obviously made me react. And it always feels good when you get that second investigator uh, feels and sees the same thing. Um, and then pretty much the same thing happened with you. Uh, where yeah. you, you saw whatever was behind yeah. me and, and I got touched at the same yeah. time. So I've been touched twice here, which I don't really know what the significance of yeah. this place is. But, <clears throat> right. I mean, we're gonna take a walk into the gazebo. Yep. And then I'm gonna go over the um, different experiences. Um, that I'm, um, so basically, a lot. Like obviously, when we're doing this, it's pitch black. You can barely see this. And uh, one night, it was one of like the was it one of the first times we were here. And we got, got to this spot, and um, we all felt very uneasy, like we were being watched. And we were just chilling right in here, and. I looked straight out, and it literally looked like somebody had almost like a red light, but it was like bigger than a PowerPoint light, but smaller than a flashlight. And it was slowly coming towards us. So at first I thought it was a person, and it wasn't. And it just kept coming slowly and slowly, and it was just weird, and then it would disappear. And then it would pop up like on the other side, and it was back and forth, it was really weird. We got really like an overwhelming feeling of just being watched and like get out. So we all were just like, you know what? Let's just do a quick EVP session and just let's get out of here. It just doesn't feel right. We always follow our gut instinct when it comes to stuff like that. Um, so we left that night and uh, it was just really weird. Um, another time we were all in here investigating. And I was sitting right here, right at the table here, facing this way. And behind me, it sounded like someone was like running up. And as you can see uh, in, in, the, in the film, you can see this woods here, you know. So if there was an actual person or an animal, you'd be able to see it. You know, we, we lit the area up. There was nothing there. It was just really weird. And like, kept feeling like there was something charging up on you. So those are some of the experiences that I've gotten over here. We have captured EVPs in this area as well. So, um, else? very feelings of being uncomfortable in here. Yeah, just always like, <clears throat> just feelings of being watched. Yeah, <clears throat> I feel like you're just being surrounded in this gazebo. 
I, I remember at one point I felt like I saw a shadow in this far corner here. Mm -hmm. And there was another night where we had a uh, motion sensor IR camera recording here, the trail cam. Right. And I kept feeling like I was seeing somebody poke their head up from, uh, from over here and just like darting back and forth. Uh, and then there was one time just right in this pathway, I was here with one of our old investigators, Hanson, and we were just talking and doing an EVP session, and I remember just audibly hearing something shush us, and we have it on audio, yeah. and I, I was like, no, you shush, and just because it was just, it was, a, it was very like, uh, like frustrating night just to the way you felt, and I remember somebody shushing us, we have it on audio, and I was like, no, you shush. Uh, so that's just a couple of things we've had happen uh, just in the gazebo area. Then we'll take a walk to the um, Indian drinking statue, which you can see it from here. It's fenced off right there. And there are a couple of uh, paranormal claims that happened in that area as well. So we'll take a walk over there now. So this is the um, Indian drinking statue. Uh, it's dated from 1904. One of the paranormal claims that I read in a couple books and stuff is that there was a park ranger that was just walking around the grounds and he actually saw an apparition of an Indian that was kneeled down, very similar to that, over here and then just disappeared. So that is one of the claims that's over here. So one night when we were investigating, we had um, I think nine of us in our team that night and we all broke up into three groups of three. And then what we did was those groups broke up into singles. So I was actually positioned here. There was somebody positioned in the gazebo and then there's a trail on the other side. My third team member was positioned there. The other three people were positioned. There's a statue monument over there. Somebody was positioned by the field hospital, which was Dimitri. And then there was a third person in the back corner over there on the pathway. So I'm over here and I am literally facing the statue. I have the PSP7 spirit box going and a voice came over and said, look behind you turn around and I'm like what's behind me and it said Dimitri which was weird because it's not a common name that would no. be spoken over radio waves and stuff so that is something that we are able to call it on audio which is really interesting so um, I don't know I, I, I just don't know I mean people come over here by themselves we'll send investigators here and they do get that uneasy feeling like they're being watched like something's gonna run up on them but then it just dissipates so yeah, you feel very anxious in this yeah, area. It's weird. Very anxious. Uh, that's what we got over here. Now we're going to take you over to our, um, we call it the Fort George Walk. So let's head over there now. Yeah. Here we are. This is what we call the path to Fort George. Up here is the remains of an old fort. Obviously, it's called George. And one of the things that we've had here is I was investigating over by the field hospital and one of our old members started having like very overwhelming experiences. He was one of our psychics in the group and he just was like really having just a lot of reactions to the location. And it just got to a point where he was on the ground and just inconsolable. And I remember being radioed, me and Mike saying, Mike, Dimitri, we need you guys over here now. And so we literally, I was at the field hospital, Mike was at the gazebo. Um, field hospital's further away than the gazebo is. And I just ran, didn't have my flashlight in my hand, nothing. I ran down this pathway as fast as I could and I saw a light just bobbing up and down. And I thought it was Mike in front of me leading me along the way. I thought it was just his flashlight like running back and forth. And I was running, 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 and next thing I know, they're right in front of me, and I stopped. And I was like, wait, where's Mike? And Mike came up behind me like a minute later. I had literally run over here in the dark, not being able to see, and something like a light guided me to where Jake was. That was a wild experience. I couldn't explain it. Um, in this area, when we get up to Fort George, there's a lot of unexplained lights in this area. So, I mean, we always do these solo walks. What we do is we grab everybody at this location and they'll walk from here up to Fort George by themselves. And it's just a way to give the, the, the investigator an experience, something that they can't explain, you know? And, you know, it, get, it takes away that comfort that you would normally get being 
surrounded by the rest of your team. It's just, it's just a moment of vulnerability and really gives them uh, hopefully an experience that they'll get to keep with them the rest of their lives. I mean, it's different from like, you know, we know the location isn't demonically active no. or anything like no. that. So nothing in the negative aspect is going to happen. Right. You, know, you might see something, you know, something might touch you from behind, whatever it is. But it's nothing. We wouldn't put any of our investigators in harm's way. Per se, you know what I'm saying? So, um, but yeah, let's um, maybe do that walk up to Fort Yeah. Yeah. That's good. yeah. All right, so here we are. This is Fort George. This is what remains of Fort George, I should say. Um, just an interesting tidbit. They, we were here one year and they were excavating. And they had all of this dirt and stuff removed. And they had just discovered that there was actually a floor below this. Which was really wild to just get the opportunity to see. Um, that being said, we've had... We've come here a bunch of times already. Right. So we've had a numerous... Uh, paranormal experiences. Uh, one of my favorite ones is I was standing here with Tom and Will was with us, uh, but you were doing something else. But uh, so yeah, not paying, not paying you're not paying attention. <laughs> so we were standing here from our walk, and um, one of our female investigators was walking up the pathway, and we were waiting for her to come. And I was talking to Tom about shadow people, because he'd never experienced one before. And I was like, Oh, you see her coming up. I said, that's, a sh that, that's what a shadow person will look like. You can't see any features. It's just a, a black mass and it's coming toward, and it comes towards you or it's running on pathways or whatever. And then next thing we know, we see the female investigator curving around and we're like, wait a minute. And she came up to us and she's like, did you see that person standing to the side? So it was really cool because me and Tom both saw it. We thought it was our investigator, but it turned out to literally just be a shadow person coming our way. And she saw it from the other angle. So. It's really cool to have the three of us all witness that at the same time. And, and there was another time prior to that where um, I was one of the first people to come up to do the walk and I was just hanging out here and one of our old investigators walked up the pathway and as she got up a little ways, we both looked and there was a white mist, white shadowy figure, whatever you want to call it, literally just crossed the pathway that way. And she was just like, whoa. And I'm like, you saw that? And she's like, yeah. And I'm like, what did you see? And she's like, a white mist just walking that way. And I was like, it was cool because we both had, saw the same thing and got it from different angles, which was really awesome. Um, it was just a cool experience to have, you know. There's been other times where we were here with the, um, some of the people from Fort William Henry came out with us one night. And we were here, I think we had about seven or eight of us. And literally, we felt like we were being surrounded. And the the feeling got so intense where we literally lined up like in a circle and put our backs to each other because that's how intense it got. So those are the types of things that happen here. I mean, you'll, you'll hear things in the woods like run up and then when you turn around, it like is gone. So I don't know. I mean, the, the fort itself, this is the remnants of it, but it was actually a huge fort. Um, this, this, there's like things over there. Yeah, there's like four corner pieces. One's like way deep in the woods there, that way, and there's two more out over here. So it was a huge fort. Um, and Fort William Henry is walking distance from here. It's not far. It's like right. maybe a 10 minute walk. So, um, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty much the history and haunted history of Lake George Battleground. So yeah. we're going to start our investigation a little bit and um, see what we got. Yeah. All right, here we are at Lake George Battleground. Um, we're gonna start our investigation now. Um, we are right outside the gazebo area, so we're gonna uh, see what we get. So I'm just gonna start audio going, and probably set some traps for equipment and see what happens.
Yeah, we can do that. So what else do we have? What do you have? Uh, I have the FLIR, my audio, and the radio shack IR at the mountain. So I'll have the cell sensor there. I got the electric, uh, the electric smart meter over here, so. I should have a guider. You can't really drop that. So just to um, go over just some of the equipment that we have placed, um, that over there with the green light on it, it's called the electro smog meter. Um, basically, what that does, it detects the power level of radio frequencies. In theory, when it goes manifest, it's gonna try to communicate with us through radio signals, causing those lights to jump up. It goes from green to yellow to red is the highest signal. So. That's the kind of stuff that we're looking for. You can also do what we call the Chris Fleming theory, um, asking the ghost spirit, whatever you want to call it, to answer yes and no questions by blinking those lights twice for yes and once for no. Um, over on that side of the room, we have what's called an EMF cell sensor that detects um, EMF, electromagnetic fields. In theory, when it goes to manifest, it's gonna give off an EMF field and um, the, uh, once that hits about the 1.5 range um, in milligauss, it'll start to beep and it will light up red. So that's just an indicator. We usually like to try to set traps, put them around us, and see if anything does come close to us, this stuff will light up. Um, I also have what's called an energy loss meter. Um, this is just based off of the theories. Um, I actually created it. Um, there's a lot of theories of when you go to different haunted locations, and you have, say, a video camera or a digital camera that's fully charged. Within the first five minutes, the battery's drained and the equipment's dead. The theory is that the ghost or entity is drawing in any energy you can get, in this case, the batteries and the camera, causing those pieces of equipment to die, is it needs energy. So in this case, we all this is, is a, it's a nine volt battery in a, in a, in a voltage meter. You put the nine volt battery, you turn it on, it should read around nine volts. So, in theory, if the ghost is trying to draw energy in the hopes of drawing the energy out of that 9 volt battery, having that needle drop, there's no other draw on this piece of equipment. The, the equipment cannot be faked. Radio signals and EMF do not really affect this meter at all. So, we kind of just monitor that to see if there's any drops in voltage throughout the night. So, um, we're just going to do an EDP session now, we'll start that, and um, see if we capture uh, it. So uh, we'll start it out. Um, how's it going tonight? My name is Mike. I got Will, Dimitri, and Julia here with us. Uh, can you tell me your name? We came here tonight to try to communicate with you. We do have a couple of devices that are out. And there's one with the green light on it, and there's one over there with the red light on it. If you, if you come close to those devices, they'll light up. And we mean you no harm, we're just trying to communicate with you. Can you do that for us? Can you set off any of our devices? Tell me what took place here.
Can you tell me what you see from where you're standing? Does us being here upset you? don't want us here with you, and you make a loud noise for us, going to be here all night. So if there's something you need to say or something that you need to do to let us know that you're here, this is your chance. I don't know how often people come up here and try to communicate with you. It does sound like it. Sounds like it. It went from over here to over there. It's bumped. Yeah. Sounds like an RC bike. It's bumped. It's bumped. But it's charging up. For a strange sounding bird. Everybody feeling okay? Yeah, it feels pretty good. Yeah, and it's a little quiet. I don't really not feel as much. Yeah. So in the experience, Will was talking about the last time we were here, uh, he, the, there was a table sitting pretty much where uh, you're standing, and um, I was sitting over here literally looking at him, because he said, watch my back, and I take yeah. things like that very literally. Yeah, because, that, I mean, this has happened before, so right. like I said, like you said, the table was here, I was sitting down with my back to the corner behind me. Yeah, and I was sitting probably like right, right here sitting right here and I, I literally saw from behind him without saying anything to him 
something like standing in this corner, like come down and kind of like crawl, like low. And right as I saw it, I just looked at him. I said, Will, you're six. And he goes to t turn around. As he goes to turn around, something touched you right yeah, on the shoulder. Touched my, my shoulder. So yeah. That was really wild. That's that's the most significant experience I've had in here, which is why I set the cell phone tarp over here. Right. I keep, I keep getting gravitated to that corner because I don't know what that was still to this day. So. Yeah. Twice on two different occasions. Yeah. Right now. EVP session over here. We'd like to thank you for speaking with us. We're going to be around for a little while longer, but we're also going to be heading to uh, Fort George in a minute. So if you're here with us and you want to join us over there, please feel free. Thank you very much for speaking with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So this is Fort George. This is the trail we were talking about uh, earlier on. Uh, you're going to actually take a walk with me and follow me as I do my solo walk to Fort George. Maybe during this walk we can hear something possibly paranormal or maybe pick up some audio on either my recorder or on the camera. Uh, when I do this I actually try not to take any equipment with me. I really just want to feel the location and just pay attention more to my surroundings and the equipment to see if maybe I can see something out of the corner of my eye because that tends to be what we have happen here and that's what we tend to capture the most. So, uh, follow me. Obviously you can hear the town in the background. Um, with the music and stuff like that. Uh, but I am hearing some chatter in this like direct vicinity over here. Now the rest of the crew is all the way up by Fort George. Unless they're screaming, we shouldn't be able to hear them. Like when I was coming up, I noted like obviously you can hear the town and the music yeah. and all that other stuff. Right. So you've got to be aware of that. But like, <clears throat> I heard like like just like people chattering, and I was saying like you guys would have to be screaming in order for me to hear you guys too. Um, so really interesting. Um, 
Um, well, what do you have? Let's see here. So let's just do, do a quick. Um, do you want to you want to go through the CEM? So um, we're using the CEM IR thermometer. IR being infrared. Um, what we're looking for is hot and cold spots with this. So in theory. What happens is when it goes to this manifesting, it needs energy to manifest, and it's drawing the heat energy out of the air, okay? If it's condensing it to one spot, that spot should cause a hot spot. Same concept, as it's drawing the heat out of the air, the surrounding area should cause a cold spot. That's the theory behind it. Um, you know, some people say that, you know, if it's a hot spot, it's demonic, blah, blah, blah. I, I, I just don't see any science behind that. Um, they say that because hell, fire, hot, but there's just no real science to that. I think this deal is a little bit more logical. Um, why use an IR thermometer? Some people have done experiment, experiments. I think it was um, Patrick Burns did a really awesome experiment, actually, with the IR thermometer. He had a, um, a tea kettle on a stove and the steam was pouring out of it and he shot the IR thermometer through it with the laser pointer and you hit the wall and it was reading like 70 something degrees. Now steam isn't 70 degrees, it's well over 100. So the, a lot of people think, well, why would you use an IR thermometer? Okay. If you're at a house and doing an investigation and you see something walk through a wall, you can scan that wall. Say if you're reading like, you know, 70, 77, 50, you know, you might have something there. Um, the other thing is with using an IR thermometer, we don't know the density of a ghost. Okay, so same concept that Patrick Burns did with the um, steam kettle. If I take a fire extinguisher and I spray that up and you shoot the IR thermometer at it's going to tell you to a cold temperature because there's density in that. So we just don't know. If we don't know the density of a ghost, so we can't just cancel out using an IR thermometer in the field. It could work. We just don't know. Um, I have gotten some interesting readings off of that at one of our locations before in the past, so that's why we do use it. Um, so here we are outside Port George. Um, we have some equipment once again. We have the electro smog meter over there set up. We have our EMF cell sensor over here set up, so why don't we um, spread out a little bit? Why don't we do an EVP session? Now? We got this way, I'll take over here. Yep. How's it going tonight? My name is Mike. I have Dimitri, Will, and Julia with us. Can you tell me what happened here? Tell us how many of us are here with you. Does us being here bother you? Are you injured? Sounds 
like Fort William Henry is doing one of their last cannon fires for the night. And with the cannon fire, if the spirits that are here are tied to the French and Indian War, it might uh, kind of like rattle the area and release some of that energy, hopefully causing some kind of spike in paranormal activity. Um, yeah, it's just, I wasn't expecting to hear a cannon fire this late at night. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Up. Still sounds like cannon fire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are we in any danger here? Are you stationed here at this fort? How many casualties do we have right now?
right, we're going to end this EVP session. We would like to thank you guys for speaking with us. Uh, we're going to be here for a little bit while longer, and uh, we're always here visiting. So if you ever have anything you want to say, uh, please feel free to try to communicate with us. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so this is uh, this wraps up our investigation here at uh, Lake George Battleground. I hope you guys enjoyed the uh, investigation as it freely recorded. Um, now we're going to go back, listen to all the analysis, and hopefully we caught some EVPs or some cool pictures or video or something like that. And uh, so yeah, I mean, it seemed like a quiet night, but you never know what you're going right. to capture on the analysis of audio photography and video so we'll um like i said we can sure we'll go back analyze everything and see if we get anything so, right all right otherwise yeah have a good see night. you in a bit thank you for joining us on this latest edition of lippy presents real ghost hunting it's coming in 2020 watch Real Ghost Hunting, The Reveal Show, to find out anything that we captured on this investigation from tonight's episode. If you would like, you can follow us further by liking, sharing, and subscribing our videos, and clicking the little notification bell to note all of our content is being uploaded to YouTube. So thank you guys very much for joining us on Real Ghost Hunting, and until next time, take care.